Good morning, everybody. It is uh, September 9th, I believe. We are at the North Farm. We've got about a week, 10 days left to go at the South Farm, and then we are complete. But myself, Will, the new guy, one of the newest of the new guys, Donovan, and Ashton, and of course, it's Chapel. Uh, we all came up here uh, yesterday to start combining at the North Farm full time. So currently, we're on Durham, which is a wheat, but it's Durham is more for is for pasta. Uh, we're cutting Durham right now, and then once we finish the Durham, we're gonna go try another field of lentils because we still got one more field of lentils to do. And then after that, I'm sure the wheat is gonna go in and the canola. So we're gonna start up here now, and we're gonna keep going full time. Now, once we complete the harvest down south. Lee and Austin hopefully will be joining us up here so we can get a little extra manpower and speed this process up. But currently, it's a beautiful morning. We're fueling. It's actually quite late in the morning. It's like 11.30. It's almost noon. Uh, again, we just got up here yesterday, so we had to set up our fuel wagon and had to do a bunch of stuff uh, around the yard. We had to get the bagger set up. And we already goofed up on that. We'll get over there and we'll give you an update on that. And there's more of my goof up than anything. So this is uh, my Diamond Sea trailer that I have up here. We stuck a tow to death on. 1,000 gallon tank right there. We had a bag from last year that we thought that we could reuse. So we st we stored it. And uh, like it's a brand new bag. It's never been... Uh, it's two-thirds of a bag, okay guys? It's two-thirds. So a normal bag is 300 feet. So it's about 200 feet of bag there, okay? Unused. And it's all nicely twined and roped up and we actually stuck that on the bagger and realized that it's got a bunch of water in it that's not drying and rotten green and then some mice got in there and chewed some holes and we're like well i guess we can't use that so that's a thousand dollars gone so anyways that will have to get recycled it's not even in a roll we would maybe we're just gonna have to take it to a depot i'm not sure what we're gonna do that because typically when you recycle bags you roll them out because you're done you know you've used them and then you roll them. I guess we could drag it out and roll it. Anyways, that's a future problem. So we're filling, we're gonna do some greasing, and then we're gonna do some combining. Let's take a look at some of this Durham sample here. So I already got the Durham uh, graded by two different buyers. One buyer graded it at two, and the other graded it a three. So it's basically a poor two, good three, kind of right in the middle. Um, but the buyer who graded a two said that they would actually blend it right to a one for me. Like I don't even have to have any one to give them. They're, they're sitting on enough one that I could just bring it in and they'd blend to a one. Now, why is that important? That's important because there's a price difference. I think it's like 15 bucks a bushel right now for a number one probably drops down to like 25, 30 cents a bushel, which is not much of a spread to go to a two. And it probably drops to 50 to 60 cents a bushel to get down to that three from the original 15. And then if you ever hit a four, well now you're dropping dollars. You're probably gonna drop a dollar, $50, 80, I think is kind of what they told me. So hopefully you never get to a four, but what would make you get to a four is if it kept raining. It would just uh, bleach it and then it's mildew. The mildew will get you. Mildew is when the green, the kernels are sitting in the head and they get moldy because they're sitting in moist, wet heads. So here's the Durham. It's actually not a bad sample. There is some odd shaped ones. This isn't the best, but it's a two, borderline three. But anyways, that's what we're doing. And we're putting the derm in a bag. Why are we putting the derm in a bag and not the bins? That's a good question. Is because wheat and canola gotta go in the bins. Lentils and mustard are already in other hopper bins. So uh, we don't have any more bin space without building more bins. And that is not in the budget. So we are going to throw it in the bag. We'll get you over there and we will do an update on that. And we're cutting. We didn't make it over the bag yet, but we'll get there. So we're cutting down on some derm. It's yielding not bad. I'm hoping that it will average 60, is what I'm hoping for. We'll know once we, uh, actually we'll know when we sell it because there's really no any accurate way because I haven't really calibrated the combine and grain cart scales can be off. So we'll know when we sell it. And I'm gonna sell it right away.
because it's going to be in a grain bag over there, and I do not feel like messing around with that during the winter, so it be the first crop to go. Just turn the corner. Our sample doesn't look too bad. We have, oh, you can't see through that window at all. Well, alrighty then. <laughs> We have one filler plate in on each of the very front concave. Uh, we needed to help thrash this stuff just a little bit better. Good thing we rolled this because we got a lot of lodge derm. Oh, and we're missing half of it here. Holy cow, Mike, stop recording. There it is. That's what I like to see. Oh, oh, now I'm missing. Oh, my goodness. get all this lodge stuff. See, we still got a couple heads in there. But, not bad. Not bad. We also have uh, wide bar concaves in for, I think it's number three. I think we got, I think we got small, small, large. Really happy with the derm, you guys. Super stoked about it. Um, it is a bit of a risky gamble to grow derm up here for mildew reasons and fusarium reasons, basically disease reasons and mold and all that fun stuff. But it is working out. I'm gonna pick this reel up just a little bit. This year, it's working out this year. Will it work out next year? Who, who knows? Who knows? but super happy about it. Okay, so we're doing about, well, right now we're doing about 2.6. And uh, we're taking all the straw in because it's kind of lodged here. It's doing about 80 in these low spots. quite often and I prefer not to. I prefer to keep it into the green, not into the yellow. Remember Mike's already sheared one rotor coupler and I've plugged my feed accelerator many times. <laughs> and it's actually, to be, believe it or not guys, it's actually not that fun unplugging your feed accelerator. And you know what's also not fun? Unplugging the back. I have not plugged the back end on this combine since we left the lentils, thank goodness. But we do have another field of lentils to do, so I'm not looking forward to that. So I've plugged everything there is to plug on an X9. That's not true, I haven't plugged my tailings yet. Today. <laughs> no, actually the tailings are pretty good. So with the X9, ooh, look at that, I'm throwing over like a madman over here. Back her down, man. Back her the frick down. Holy cow. Oh, man. We gotta, where's our bushel plus pan? Somebody get us our bushel plus pan. Anyways, um, with the X9, once your tailing starts getting like, hits at like 75% or what on, it automatically starts opening up your bottom sieve to keep your tailings from working. So that's a stinking nice option. Really, really enjoy that. I don't even have to watch it. I can just, it just does its own thing. Yeah. Cracking along. 
Here's our burnt out spots. These are burnt out spots. They'll probably do all of like 35 bushel an acre. Lodged, burnt out. We were so close to having an insane crop. We just didn't get any rain in July up here. It was dry. It burnt our wheat up and it burnt our derm up. But it was great for the lentils. The lentils loved it. I can't imagine the canola did, but we will find that out when we get there. We better slow her down here. Back her down, get her pitched down, pitch this header down. There it is, clean her right up. Clean her right up. Good thing we rolled, guys. Good thing we rolled. Beauty. So yeah, we're taking our time out here. We're doing a good job. And uh, we do have another combine that's going to join us. And then when the rest of the crew gets here, we'll probably have another combine that's going to join us because I did ship the X9 up here. The South X9 is up at the North Farm now, so both X9s are up here. I am running the North Farm X9 currently. We just don't have that many bodies. And, uh, oh yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, but our 690 that we bought, like our recent 690, I can't remember if I mentioned this. Remember, I said, I'm pretty sure I had a video, I said it had a clunk, it had a clunk. And, uh, and the header wouldn't go, the header wouldn't go up. It just seep down. So anyway, that's a hydraulic block. The header was, um, and then they actually picked up the combine, hauled it into the dealership to evaluate the clunk, and it was uh, final drive. So I haven't cut with that with that S six ninety since that video. It cut three or four hours, and that's all it's been. It's been in the shop ever since. <laughs> Oh man, but you know what? That's fine because remember I said it had a green light and they have to guarantee it. That's part of their program. So they've given us a loaner uh, ever since it's gone down. So super thankful to that. Super thankful for that to our dealership. Thank you guys. And so we have a loaner coming here. We had a loaner at the South Farm because it was at the South Farm. It's still at the South uh, down there at that dealership, the South dealership. And then I'm like, well, I need to bring the loaner north. And they're like, well, you can't take this loaner. That's the South dealership loaner, but you're gonna have to get another loaner from your local dealer up north, which we did. Tailings volume full, tailings volume full, opened up to eight, it's 14 and eight. Now it's coming back down to five. It's a beauty. Isn't that a thing of beauty? You won't actually plug it. That's not true. I think I actually have, but anyways. So we got another loaner, another loaner. We got a loaner coming up here. Dono is going to be on that combine. I believe it's a 780, which is actually what we were using down south too. So super thankful for that. And then when Ashton comes out, I think Ashton's going to try to do a little bit of combining part time. She will run the other X9. All right, guys. I'm going to keep enjoying this. Beautiful crop. Love it. So you see this spot right here? That's a burn spot. And then there's actually a little bit more. Zoom up here. Right in here is a burn spot. That green you see is some willows that are trying to come through again. So we got burned out spots and then we got lodge spots. We were one rain away from having a crazy crop. We really were. Um, you gotta remember it didn't rain up here in July. It was actually pretty dry. Our yields are gonna be back this year from what they were last year. We're just gonna mow these little wheels right over. Get out of here. Get, get in there, get in there. Remember that one time we were mowing willow trees down with the ideal combines? <laughs> Get in there, get, get in there. <laughs> Anyways, um, really happy with this Durham. Really, really happy with the Durham. It, you gotta remember that it's kind of a high risk to grow Durham up in this area of the world because the same with lentils, same with lentils. Because the excess moisture can bring your grades down, give you lots of disease problems. And then at the end of the day, by the time you can sell it, you wise have just grown wheat or something. You're gonna net the 
the same. Well, this year we kind of hit it just right, I guess. The derm is running really good. Um, the protein on it is pretty good. I think it's 14.7. I think that's what she wrote on the paper, 14.7, which is not bad. It's nowhere near our 18% protein back home, but you gotta remember that it's a drought back there, so you're gonna have higher protein. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the derm. Really stinking happy with the derm. Sample's not too bad. So after this field of derm, uh, we got one more field of lentils we gotta get done. Boy, this little power bar just keeps going. It goes, goes to the yellow, comes back to the green. It's not feeding super awesome because some lodge spots, slow down, creates a bit of a gob on your header and kind of comes flying in. I'm trying to adjust your reel all the time for that. Pick your reel up just a little bit perfect. Remember when I did that, um, how quiet the X9 is? It is quiet. But once you put load on this thing, like actual load, it gets loud. I should try and uh, I'll do another one. See what it sets, sits at. Here. That would be a really great thing to do. There we go. Slow and steady wins the race. I do not want to shear another uh, rotor coupler. Nope. I don't want to dig any choppers out. Nope, actually I don't think we would uh, unless we were in lentils again. But still, unplugging feed accelerators or rotors, not fun. So we're, right now we're doing about 3.6, 4 mile an hour. I'm happy with that, I'm content with that. Obviously we're not doing that in the lodge spots. We're up on top of a hill right now, which is only running well, it's probably only running 40 up on top of the hill. But you can hear the combine grumbling, can't you? Oh, there's some lodge stuff. We're going to slow it down to this. So we're doing 2.4 now. And we're taking it all in. Header is, header is pretty low to the ground. Sorry about that. So Mike, how come you don't push that thing? Like push her right in the yellow. Keep her in the mustard. That's where everyone likes to run them. Put them in the mustard. Um, because I haven't dropped pans yet this year. Probably still will, but we're just getting going up here. Um, when I put this thing in the mustard, and when John Deere came out to throw the pans on our wheat and our canola last year, I was pumping way more out the back than I wanted to. That's the reason why. I want to be below a quarter of a bushel. So if I'm in 80 bushel Durham, like right in this area, I want to be below a quarter of a bushel, even in 80 bushel Durham. That's just where I want to be. So as of right now, we're just taking her slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Let's do that uh, sound right now. All right, so I just finished uh, dumping here, and uh, while I was on my last pass, I pushed it a little bit more to hit basically the bottom of the yellow. And uh, one time I hit the ketchup, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, and I was clocking the dBs the whole time, so it's actually 69.5 was the average on 36 seconds. Um, and in prior back home with Max 9 on mustard, brown mustard, that was doing like nine bushel an acre. It was uh, 
Okay, so this one up here, 69.5. Hold on, let me check. It was 64.8 down there. And on the S690, it was 71.4. Okay, so 68.5, 64.8 was back home when they're running empty. So they are louder, but they're still quieter than the S series. So, there you go. There's a little fun fact for you. But anyways, let's offload some girl. Whoa, he's getting awfully close. Looks pretty close there. guys really happy with this germ crop grumble 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 you're good thanks Alright guys, I'll get you on the flipper. See you next time.